What's up guys, Belligerent here with another Bloodline video. Let's take a look at the new clan. Uh, Choir Discordant, I think is what it's called. I, like They just keep getting more obscure with these names. Uh, but anyway, so it's a really exciting new clan. And I'm really excited about what this clan does for the game, regardless of whether they're good or not. Uh, and we're going to talk about that in just a minute. Uh, we did put out a poll on YouTube about pushing another champion to 15 stars and, and kind of doing a champion spotlight on that. And everybody chose this clan. This is not that video. This is just kind of the, uh, you know, an overview video. I haven't. Let me show you. This is kind of a, annoying, honestly, uh, right here. So I'm stuck at 59. So I haven't got 60. So I can't push it to... 15 stars just yet um but i do have 10 summons so let's let's just pop them here in the video just real quick before we get started in the video see if i can get lucky and get that final one for you guys there uh, and then we can start working towards making uh the, the 15 star uh, i don't know if i'm gonna go male or female yet um all right so legendary Oh, and we still didn't get it. So still one short. I'll keep working on it. Um, hopefully we'll get it by the end. If not, we'll probably get it in the roulette following the event. Okay. Um, but let's jump into the clan high, the clan spotlight here. Okay, so we got the choir discordant. Uh, they're there. It's a tank clan, uh, male, female. Let's do what we do, guys. Let's look at their their passives. Their actives, their ultimates, and let's talk about some traits, how you should run them, stuff like that. Um, so uh, let's jump into the mail first. The mail. So from what I've heard, this is just what I've heard. I haven't played with. You, they both seem really strong. Like you should probably be going for this clan. Uh, but again, as I've told people and will continue to tell people. If you don't have enough to get the companion, probably should wait and save up your summons. Uh, because you, these will be in future banners as well. Any new, any banner that's released after this clan, these guys will be included in it. So this is not your only chance to get these champions. However, in my opinion, you should, especially if you're doing like free to play, and if you can't get the companion, save the summons until you have, I would say, a minimum of 300 saved up to be able to get the companion. And I mean, 300 is kind of minimum there. I mean, if we look here, um, where am I at right now? I'm at 312. And I did the, uh, let's see, and I did this battle pass that gave me another 10 um of there so if without this battle pass i wouldn't be at 59 i would be at 49 okay so 300 minimum is really what you should be aiming for uh when doing a banner all right that aside let's jump into it uh from what oh, so what for what i was saying from what i've heard both of these are super strong from what i've seen both of these are super strong like these are these are almost the first kind of real tanks we've had i mean we've had some others that we've kind of tried to make do with but these two kind of really present a problem uh they feel like they do a little too much damage for what i think a tank class should be but as far as like staying on the battlefield staying annoying uh you know soaking it you know i think they kind of hit the whole tank thing with this all right so let's talk about the male first Okay, so the male passive, uh, Ballad of Decay. Each attack heals the caster by 5% of the max constitution. If killed, the caster will be revived whenever an allied or enemy champion is killed. Once revived, the caster immediately recovers 60% of max constitution, gaining invincibility briefly, and taunts nearby enemies 
As long as the caster survives, whenever an allied or enemy champion is killed, he will self-heal by 30% of his max constitution within one second. This right here, and there's a couple other examples of this. Um, when we go, as we go through these skills, you'll see what I'm talking about. But this right here is why I am so excited for this clan. And not, I mean, the champions are good, which is a bonus, but that's not what I'm talking about. I am so excited about this clan because of what it means to the game, assuming this isn't just a one-off, okay? This shows, hopefully, that they're starting to create skills that scale off of something other than strength. Okay? Uh, recovers 60% of his max constitution. Previous iterations of something like this would be recover 60% of his max strength. Everything would be strength, strength, strength. Okay? Uh, let's look at the active. Okay? His active is Pale Melody, creates a 5 second shield that absorbs damage equal to 40% of the caster's max constitution. Again, max constitution. So we're getting something other than strength as our scale, which is big because constitution is the biggest, um, the biggest stat in the game, essentially, and that's what you want for your tanks. Uh, so... Look, if we look at this real quick, let me jump back in here. Um, and for example, like if we just, I'm just going to pull her up. Look at my stats here, okay? Constitution, by far better than strength. So you tell me if you're a tank, what do you want your shield scaling off of? Strength or constitution? Right? Like we want it scaling off of constitution. That's why that shield on this guy is amazing. But just the fact, for me, for me personally, just the fact that we are starting to get skills that are scaling off of something other than strength might be a turning point for Bloodline. Might kind of almost be the revival of a game that was just kind of, like it felt like it could be so good, but it, it was almost like they didn't have a plan for it. And now I'm excited. It feels like we're starting to get a game that is at least in the infancy stages of being a well-rounded out game. Okay, so let's move on from that. Uh, Requiem for the Dead is his ultimate. The caster strums, strums the strings of fate and plays entrancing melody for five seconds. Once the caster is playing... They can't be interrupted. So this is another one of those kind of like male gold tongue that once he ults, you can't stop him. Um, they uh, can't be interrupted. Damage taken is reduced by 80%. That is a big damage reduction right there. During this time, the caster will continue to summon the undead who will pounce on enemies. And I did see somebody ask about this skill. Just know it's the little blue things that come shooting out of him that essentially look like little blue fireballs that go and attack uh, the enemies, those are the undead it's talking about. Don't expect to actually see some type of undead like you do with the female. Uh, dealing damage to all enemies along their path equal to 200% of the caster's strength. And preventing the enemies from casting any active skills or ultimate attacks for two seconds. That's big too. That's essentially, it's a silence. Okay, now it only lasts for two seconds, but that's big. Uh, so... Uh, the caster recovers HP by 20% of the damage dealt by the undead. Uh, so a self-heal there. Um, if an enemy is killed by the undead, the caster and a random champion ally each recover 100 energy. Okay, so that that is, for me, that's what I want from a tank. I want somebody who heals. I want somebody who reduces damage. Uh, the other skill, or his passive, I believe, uh, said he taunted when he came back to life. Um, so all good things here, like super strong kit. Really good, really good, really good. Um, but, but what was I going to say? What was I going to say? Um, oh, and the other big thing is, I believe, here. So if we go back and look at his passive, 
Um, whenever an allied or enemy champion is killed, he will self-heal by 30% of max constitution. Um, I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe that those, uh, the undead that he summons count as allies. Uh, I could be wrong. Um, all right. That is the male. Let's transition over here to the female. Talk about her passive. Okay, mournful companion. When the battle starts, the caster summons an undead to fight alongside her. Uh, the undead shares the same stats with the caster, taking 50% less skill damage and continuously attack enemy champions in the back row. So this is... I. I love her, especially the synergy with her and some of the, like, male bug. Uh, you could talk about male fox. You could look at female strix. All these different, even female bug. All these ways to get onto that back line there. And now you have a tank that can stay a tank on your front line while also putting pressure on the back line. I love uh, the fact that that what she, the the thing she summons goes to the back line. Um, whenever the enemy, whenever an enemy is killed, the undead will permanently gain thirty percent more max constitution. So thirty. So the undead, it like it's it's max constitution increases, but while keeping her current constitution percentage. Okay, so that's almost like a heal, but it also if you run a healer on your team. That gives her the ability to heal up as well. Uh, if the caster takes a fatal attack, the undead will take the attack in her stead. When the undead is killed, the caster gains invincibility and recovers 20% of their max constitution per second for two seconds. Okay. Now right, let's take a look at the active, which is Wailing Scythe. Quickly swings the scythe to attack nearby enemies three times, which each attack with each attack dealing damage equal to 150% of the caster's strength. For each enemy hit, this the caster recovers 40% of lost constitution. The caster's summon undead will cast the active skill in unison with her. Uh, so they're doing it's basically it's almost like a male bug where you, where your uh, your summon is doing the same thing as the champion there. Um, the thing that I'm not sure, uh, so it says the caster recovers 40% of lost constitution. So I don't know if I want to say the, the undead attack heal her as well, or I wonder if the undead attacks heal the undead. Um, either way, that's what we like to see some sustain there from uh, our tank champion. Okay. And now the ultimate uh, orders the undead to attack nearby enemy champions, dealing damage equal to 550% of the caster's strength, reducing their energy recovery speed by 40% for 6 seconds. If the undead is killed, it will be revived with 80% of max constitution. So that's big. So if your undead is killed during the battle and she gets to her ultimate again, the undead comes back. Which, if you recall, um, on her passive, right? If the caster takes a fatal attack, the undead will take the attack in her stead. When the undead is killed, the caster gains invincibility and recovers 20% of their max constitution. So, this is almost a... It's like a almost a, like a repeatable female Devala, right? As long as you can get her to her ultimate again, you know, if the undead has died because from protecting her, from taking the attacks, she gets the invincibility when the undead dies. She does her ultimate again. The undead comes back to life. And I'm assuming that when the undead is killed another time, she gets her invincibility again. Okay, so... Uh, big things there from both of those. If I had to pick one on it, like I've heard much more about the male than the female. I I got to be honest. I kind of like the female's kit better. It doesn't mean that she's going to be stronger. I haven't I haven't really played with either of them uh, to any extent, but I kind of like the female's kit uh, more, to be honest with you. All right. 
Uh, let's talk about the traits that we should be thinking about running on these two. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a couple of alternatives as well. All right. So, um, first I think that with, uh, I think it's kind of obvious you're going to want to do energetic, right? Because they scale off a of constitution. We were just talking about that. Uh, they do still have some things that scale off of strength. So we're going to want to do brutal as well, right? And then another one, I think it's this is just going to be kind of meta, honestly, guys, at least for most of this, right? And we're talking focus because we want from both of them, we want those ultimates up as much as possible. And then I think you kind of have an option on the fourth one. Uh, I think you can go agile if you want to, um, especially if the agile applies to the... Females undead agile would be good. Uh, get some more attacks, or if you feel like you need to be more tanky, uh, I would go with steadfast. Okay, um, so those are the skills that I would run on them. Now, let me give you an alternative for the male. Okay, so on the male, like we're still gonna go energetic and brutal but let me give you two alternatives on him because remember he revives so he dies and then he comes back to life and then he dies and then he comes back to life i had somebody tell me that somebody had a 15 star male revive it was a ridiculous amount of times it was like double digit amount of times okay so what if we added dutiful onto him dutiful is the Scorching fire trait, and when the champion dies, it gives energy to the rest of the team. Okay, so I think Dutiful would be a very solid pick for him. And then the other one that I think would be a very solid pick for him would be self sacrificing. This is the tree trait, the Galabar. Um, and when the champion dies, it gives the rest of the team 21% damage reduction for six seconds. Okay, so if you were to put both of those on the male, um, you could definitely, I think, make uh, make an impact with those those trait changes. Um, the only other one, honestly, that that you might consider trading out there. Um, let me see here. What am I thinking? Uh, so the only other one that I, I, I could see you. Oh, that's not what I want. It would be if you were to swap out brutal for focused. Get him to his ultimate more. Um, I think that would that could also be done because his like if we look, his multipliers are not huge. Um, let me see here. So if we look back at his, uh, his active, right? Uh, all nearby enemies take damage equal to 80% of his strength. That's not huge. Like you're not killing a team with that, right? You're also, this is not huge either. His ultimate, uh, dealing da damage that where his undead deal damage to all enemies along their path equal to 200% of his strength. That's not going to be that big either. Okay. Um, now, it, if you take out Brutal, obviously it's going to affect the part where he gets 20% of the damage dealt by the undead. Um, but if you were running the... the, uh, the alternate build that I gave you, with the dutiful and self-sacrificing, I don't know that you necessarily need all the healing because you almost kind of want him falling down and getting up and falling down and getting up. So um, just some, some theory craft in there. Those are the traits that I would uh, go with. Like I said, both of these 
are super strong. I kind of favor the kit of the female over the male. I'm not saying she's stronger, but at least what it says she does, I like a little better. Uh, but I also genuinely like the theory of putting both dutiful and self-sacrificing on your male and letting him revive a whole lot. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend. I'm belligerent. Peace.